No other motorsport is quite so haunted by its past as karting is. The glorious Eurosport coverage from the 90s of Formula Super 8 and the various 100cc categories inspired a generation of karters. Iconic shots of Pantano sliding his kart around Lonato or Rossini's instantly recognisable stance in his Swiss Hutless are burned into our collective kart and consciousness. Ford wine to the current era and we have OK as the expression of karting's most modern technology. The unfortunately named class, that is supposed to mean original karting, but for most speakers of the English language just means satisfactory, replaced the widely despised KF categories that took over from the 100cc classes in 2007. A simplification of the KF formula, the OK categories are generally more widely favoured as they have ditched the clutches and starter motors and gone back to direct drive, hence the reference to original karting. The replacement of 100cc engines in 2007 by the FIA was supposed to herald a new era of lower costs and so-called reliability with lower rev limits. But alas, karting has seen spiralling costs and a sport which has become a niche for children and F1 dreaming teenagers from very wealthy families. The debate rages on whether karting really has improved at all since the loss of 100cc. So here on my right we have the uh, 2023 uh, OK engine, um, 125 cubic, power valve, water cooled, um, super modern engine and on my left we have the 1997 air cooled engine, Formula Super A, uh, big slide carburetor, 19,000 rpm no problems, no limiter, 16,000 rpm full limiter. Of course there's 26 years difference between them. Um, and a lot of development, development has been going on. You know, this is uh, gaining over more than 40 horsepower. And my guess around 25, 26. And, you know, it's going to be really, really different. Of course, the, the racing is also very different. We have a lot more bumper spoilers going on now. Uh, there's uh, more uh, safety uh, concerns like the, like the big rear bumper. So now they're running at 150 kilos and before they're running at 140 kilos. This 140 kilos made the racing a lot more agile and the corner speed a lot higher compared to what it is now. And now it's more focused on, on getting the straight line speed and, uh, and, and creating the lap time through that. So what well, you can see it also with the, all the bumper kits and everything, everything is just completely different than what it used to be. This is just so agile and, and, and focused on, on, on the corner speed and, and, and everything around there. While this is just also focused on getting the really high straight line speed. You know, you have the aerodynamics of the bumpers. Uh, of course, the drop down bumper now, which is new and extra weight as well. Um, but all in all, in general, both fantastic machines to drive. And, uh, you know, this gives you a great time and this gives you an amazing time as well. Um, this is a little bit more what I grew up with than this. And uh, you see that now the, the only thing that uh, this, the oldest person in the class will be around 16. Of course, you have the exceptions, you know, that people that drive a little bit older. And uh, back in the day, uh, you know, you had guys running to 20, 25, even 30 years old, uh, racing this, going to the track with their father pulls out and now you need to have the whole team behind it and, uh, and, and, and support you and uh, to, to make this work. You know, it's been because of the power valve and all those kind of things, it's just a lot more complicated than what it used to be. But uh, I think it's just uh, both amazing, amazing go-karts.
Well, at first, it took me a while to get started, and, and I was a bit frightened because you get told so much about the delicacy of these engines. So I was really careful at first to take care of it and, and make sure that I would bring it home. And, and of course, you got this this carburetor that is really close to, to the chain and the chain guard and it's really very open. So I was pretty almost scared I would say at first to, to take care of it and watch for my fingers and so on. So as, as I got going then I got confidence and I started to push. simply amazing like although it's pretty much a 30 year old engine it feels like something out of this world something new because of, of the way it screams on the straight you you can really feel like it's it's at the limit and of course you got to be careful and you gotta you gotta choke the engines after long straights but it just adds to to it it feels like magic it's it's a music I must say that the biggest difference is actually on the on the handling of the car and the way you drive it. It's it's fantastic, honestly. It's it's quite a lot different, of course, because of the weight. The weight is the main difference, and the tires we used, of course, uh, newer tires on, on both cars. So on that side, they were fairly similar, but because of the weight and probably also the geometry of the car makes makes a big difference on the on the way it handles and. And it's fantastic. You can be very precise. It, it feels, it actually feels faster than a, than a senior car at, at, in some sense. I would say the as driving technique, especially on the braking, there's there's quite some difference. You you can help it because of the weight. You can you can help with the lockups to rotate the car a little bit on the braking and. It makes it very fun, uh, whereas with the newer cards, we're tending to lock up less and less on the braking. Now we got to the point that uh, we almost not lock up with our new cards. Whereas with these, because of the way it handles, you, you can actually play a little bit with the lock up to help the rotation of the card. And, and then, of course, the engine is, doesn't still have the same strength. And so, in a sense, because of the weight and the engine, it, it allows you to be very precise on the driving. Whereas with the new cars, because of, of the strength of the engine, it's more about pushing on the brake and rotating the cart and just setting it straight so you can release all the power. With this, you gotta be super precise and in the corners, millimetric, and, and try to carry the most speed in the corner. So, yeah, you have more of a style where you can carry the speed in the corner. In fact, when I was comparing also with, with Sandro, I would see that I was able actually in, in, into the corners to, to, to carry more speed than him. I would say that they're both fantastic. Uh, of course, the newer cars are a bit faster and you can tell just by the fact that the, the corners arrive earlier. Because otherwise, by the feeling, you would almost say that the, the 100 c was quicker. Because it's fantastic, the way it screams and the way it handles, it, it's, it's gorgeous. I would say to, it's almost driving wise, I would say even slightly less difficult, especially when you move from the OK Senior, you go back to the 100 c you got more time to think, but you have also more things to do. And it allows you also to be more precise. The choking makes a big difference and you can play with it a lot also on how to manage the engine, and of course also the response on the throttle. So you can play where you decide to choke and the way you want to do it, how much. So it gives you, in this sense, especially with the carburetion, more things to do, but allows you also to focus on different things with the driving and with the engine management to make the difference. So there are two different worlds, and honestly, it's been a fantastic experience for me. I long wanted to try this, so. Um, I'm actually very tempted to, to have one at home very soon.
Che figata ragazzi! Spettacolo! Uh. Andro grazie, è eh. una figata! Mm, che piacere guarda, vediamo un campione nel stesso tra qui è un piacere! <ride> no. Poi bello, da dietro uh, uh, ti vedo bello, bello, bello! Ah ma guarda, è veramente divertente! Guarda che ti, ti giuro, quando, quando un attimo mi libero eh, vorrei venire a fare qualche gara. No, no, no stai <ride> Me lo faccio, dai, me lo butto su. Allora, la prima impressione, montando sull'OK, è di un mezzo innanzitutto molto differente da un 100, un mezzo molto più strutturato, si sente subito sul volante la posizione che è un mezzo più diciamo, vicino a, a un'automobile che a un kart di vecchia concezione. Poi il, dà una buona sensazione il fatto che ha un, uh, un motore molto potente, molto bello. Naturalmente ha una differenza grossa con il 100, il fatto che eh, ha un, un limitatore, mentre insomma, il 100 va su di, di, di giri praticamente all'infinito. E la sensazione di guida bisogna un po' abituarsi perché essendo un mezzo molto più pesante bisogna stare più attenti perché fondamentalmente ha meno, ha meno secondo me insomma facendoci pochi giri ha meno possibilità di correzione ce cioè lo devi mettere subito nel punto giusto la frenata ha una frenata molto potente si sente che quando si, 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 si preme sul freno Uh, ha un grip molto, molto forte anche il primo inserimento in curva è un inserimento deciso si sente molto duro sul davanti uh, quindi un inserimento che va gestito per non trovarsi comunque anche un po' diciamo sbilanciati col peso quasi sulle due ruote quindi in definitiva penso che eh, l'OK sia una bella categoria, sia un mezzo adeguato ai tempi moderni, è un mezzo mh, non facilissimo da guidare. La giornata di oggi dove l'abbiamo paragonato, dove l'abbiamo diciamo, provato insieme a un 100, eh, il 100 dà un feeling già iniziale per me che provengo da quella generazione, dà un feeling più immediato, un po', un po più bello. Eh, anche il motore aria dà insomma, un rumore un po', di, un po', un po', un po più bello eh, però per i tempi di oggi probabilmente l'OK e per lo sviluppo del, 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 anche del, delle automobili a seguito di, del, di queste categorie propedeutiche è un, mezzo, è un bel mezzo, un mezzo corretto This was a test of feeling rather than absolute pace The extra horsepower and grippier tires on the OK meant it was faster over a single lap But the Formula A's lower weight allows for a more dynamic approach to driving, whereas the OK requires a more fixed driving style, less artistry so to speak. We can only imagine what the likes of Travis Sanuto and his karting contemporaries would look like heading out on a full grid of Formula Super A's. With less frequent rebuilds and a 100cc engine, some would say the OK package is an improvement over them too, while the dedicated few might bemoan the loss of the game. That game being how to maximise an engine being pushed to its very limit of potential. A game of high stakes where little mistakes can have massive consequences. A game which rewards wits and intelligence as well as raw speed. However, the FIA will continue with OK as a class which tries to reach the best compromise for the elite level of karting. Their position is not a simple one to manage. But for the rest of the world where 100cc karting is still thriving, we can just simply sit back and enjoy the beauty of these cars.